Hey guys, what's up? This is Steve. Today, let's go through another lead code problem 1673. Find the most competitive sequence subsequence. All right, let's take a look at the problem. Given an integer array nums and a positive integer k, written the most competitive subsequence of nums of size k. That's the entire problem. An array subsequence is a resulting sub sequence obtained by erasing possibly zero elements from the array. So this is giving the definition of a subsequence. So subsequence is different from a substring. Substring needs to be continuous, right? But subsequence is that you can remove or erase some of the characters within this given string so that it can form a subsequence. It's more flexible than a substring, right? We define that a subsequence A is more competitive than a subsequence B of the same length. They are of the equal length before we can compare. If in the first position where A and B differ, subsequence A has a number that is less than the corresponding number in B. For example, 1, 3, 4, it has three letters, three numbers, right, of this array is more competitive than 1, 3, 5. Because the first position they differ is at the final number, which is 4 in the first array and 5 in the second array. Because 4 is less than 5, we say the first array is more competitive than the second array. This is giving a more detailed example. Let's take a look at, at example 1. Nums is 3, 5, 2, 6. This array, given array of size 4, it has 4 numbers and the k is 2. This means we want to form subsequence of two numbers, right? k equals to 2, that's what 2 means. We want to find the most competitive subsequence from this given array list. The answer is 2 and 6 among the set of every possible subsequence. What are the possible subsequences? It's 3, 5, 3, 2, 3, 6, 3, 5, 3, 2, 3, 6, and then 5, 2, or 5, 6, 5, 2, or 5, 6, and then 2, 6, right? 2, 6, the last one. 2, 6 is the most competitive. Why? Because the first one, the first letter, the first number that it differs of the same size, the biggest and the smallest one is 2. So the correct answer is 2, 2 and 6. Um, so the same reasoning goes for example 2. So now the problem becomes how we can approach solve this problem. The brute force way is that we can, of course, try to find all of the subsequences and then we can do a comparison one by one comparison of course we we're going to compare the with the first numbers first if the first number we're going to sort by the first number if the first number is the smallest and then we're just going to return that one right but anyway we need to do the comparison and we need to form all of the subsequences first how we can form and find all of the subsequences we need to go through one by one, right? So for example, k equals to two, we need to form three, five, three, two, three, six, all the way. And then we start from the second integer, five, two, and five, six, and then the third integer, two, six, go all the way like this to form all of the subsequences. This is going to result in gigantic um, time and space complexity, right? Which is not ideal. And then let's take another let's just take one step back how we can simplify this logic because the do we really need to form all of these all of all of these we need to exhaustively do all of the permutation and find all of the possible subsequences in order to answer this question return the correct answer to this question no i don't think so because all that we need is because the first one that we need to, the first number that we need to find it needs to be the smallest. And then the second number that we, we can find, it should be as small, as small as possible. And the key here is that we want to maintain, you can call it a sliding window or whatever, or just within this, within this range, within the range of K, we want to find as small number as possible. So if that is the case, let's just walk through this example so we first we encounter these two letters three and five they are of length two right so we'll just keep these two because we don't know what the numbers 
in the remainder of this array could be they could be larger than three and five suppose they are six and seven right then in that case three and five is the most competitive subsequence but in this case we encountered two so two here of course two is going to replace five but can we use two to replace th three what what's going to make a call over there can we use two to replace three the decision the factor that could make a call there is that whether the remainder is still having at least a k items there if that is the case we can put two to replace three right that is the entire logic so if we think this way a a data structure that comes into mind naturally which is going to be stack right stack has the feature of first in last out so we're going to continue to check every single element on top of the stack if this one is smaller than the one that we're currently iterating on and also it has as many elements plus the ones on on the stack at least k items these two combined uh, at least k items that were safe to use the currently iterating on the smaller one to replace the one on top of the stack that's what we're going to do and this is going to make sure that this is going to minimize the time and space complexity time is just going to be o n n is the number of the elements in the given array because we only need to traverse this array once and space complex complexity is going to be is going to be only okay right k is the given size that we want to achieve because this is the number of elements we need to maintain on top of the stack right and in the end, we'll just pop everything off of the stack and assign everything into the result and return the result. I hope it makes sense. If it does, let's put the idea into the actual code. All right. So first, uh, let's initialize a stack integer. I'll just put stack. Mm. Next, what we want to do is that we want to go through this nums length i plus plus and then as long as stack is empty it is not empty and the next one we want to check if the, this one is smaller than the one on top of the stack and also we want to make sure that the one on top of the stack stack size plus plus what plus nums length minus i so that the number of remaining items in the stack in this array these two combined are going to be at least k if this is the case we're just going to keep popping off things on top of the stack right which means we're going to as pop off as many elements on top of the stack as possible if the current elements that we're iterating on in the array is smaller than the the item on top of the stack right and then so if if the stack if the size of the stack is small smaller than k for example here if we just encountered three we push three into the stack at this time the size of the stack is only one one is smaller than two so we we need to add one more element that which we are currently iterating on is five into the stack right stack push nums i into the stack all right after going through this you see we only have one for loop after this for loop it's o n big o n time complexity right we we have a stack remaining so now we're just a, this stack is guaranteed guaranteed to be the size of k if all of the input are valid let's assume that is the case all right now then let's put result now we're just to form this result result and then for int i equals uh, i equals k minus one and i greater than or equal to zero i minus minus and then here result no here it should be i is greater is zero and less than k 
should still be in plus plus because we need it here. Stack pop. We'll just keep popping everything on top of the stack and assign it to the result. That should be it. Let me run code and see if is there any compile or any errors. Wrong answer. Interesting. Okay, let me take a look what's going on. For this for loop, it needs to be exactly smaller than num's length. That's correct. And then as long as stack is not empty, and in this one, the current iterating on admin is smaller than the one on top of the stack, and the stack size plus this one is greater than, or I think should be greater than k, because we need to have at least k more than k items this these two combined greater than k then we can pop things on off of the stack all right now let me hit run code one more time hmm still wrong hmm still wrong that is because six and two and two and six oh i think i got this one because all of the stack has this feature of five right so we need to go through it this way yeah, I was correct. Greater than or equal to zero, we need to go in reverse way. Yeah, this way. I believe this now should work. We just assign, once we pop an element off of the stack, we'll, we should assign it to the end of the array, and then we move from the end to the beginning. Now let me hit submit. Yeah, accept it. 54%, 100%. Let me hit submit one more time. Yeah, exactly the same. All right, but uh, here's the idea of using stack, another core, very often commonly used data structure to help us solve problems. So this is a looking like seemingly a kind of daunting or tricky problem, but if you look closely to the problem and just to use the common data structures, we can solve this problem easily and quickly. Um, time complexity is O n as we go through this one only once this loop only once space complexity is just okay because we store only k numbers integers on top on the stack right uh, if this video helps you understand this problem or the solution please do me a favor and hit the like button that's going to help a lot with the youtube algorithm and i really appreciate it and don't forget to subscribe to my channel as i have accumulated quite a lot of different videos about data structures algorithms or combinations of data, data structures and algorithms to help better prepare for coding interviews and i have also videos about Amazon Web Services, how you can prepare and pass cloud computing certification exams. Please check them out. So hopefully I'll just see you guys in just a few short seconds in my other videos. Thank you very much for watching.